According to one athletic director in the Pac-12, the conference is going to survive, but what will that ultimately entail and how might it affect the Big 12? We'll get into that, and we're also answering your questions on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Today's show, by the way, our title sponsors are friends over at FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. All right. Once again, thank you for joining us here on your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. You know, you got a bevy of options out there when it comes to podcasts in general, and especially when it comes to BYU centric ones. But thank you to all of you for your support of the podcast. Our goal here, simply stated, is to make you guys the smartest BYU fans in the room. And as we continue to kind of monitor the Big 12 versus Pac 12 deal, I just continue to find new different angles to talk about. We actually got today's angle that I want to start off today's show with via. Ray Anderson from Arizona State. Now, he is the athletic director at ASU, has been a little bit under pressure himself, obviously, with the hire of Herm Edwards and the recruiting improprieties that happened under his tenure there. But he was on uh, Arizona Sports 98.7 down there in the Phoenix area and had two very glaring comments about the ongoing uh, situation with the Pac-12 and their media rights. And if you take them at their face value, it doesn't spell that the, that the Big 12 is going to be able to benefit from potentially the demise of the Pac-12, or at least pick off members of that conference. So there's two quotes I want to read. Uh, first one, quote, we're managing it by being patient, letting the process with our new commissioner take its course. It's been challenging and it's been frustrating. I don't think anybody can deny that. Now, obviously, that is going to uh, make you think, okay, well, he's upset. He is one of the Arizona schools that the Pac-12, excuse me, the Big 12 has hoped to have picked off in previous uh, conversations. But he sounds like he's letting things kind of go and he's hoping that everything's going to be resolved. He did add that he wants to have clarification or at least a better idea of what's going to happen with the Pac-12 media rights in two to three weeks. So that would mean by the middle of March, they should have an idea, according to him. There's also been comments uh, from Washington State uh, University President. I think it's Kirk Schultz, if I got that correct. I know Schultz is the last name. I don't remember on the first name exactly. He was saying that by April 1, he expects something to be done for the Pac-12. We'll find out if that timeline holds. But then the second quote here from Ray Anderson in this interview, quote, we have been forced just like everybody else, unfortunately, to let this thing play out because we're not directly in the driver's seat. Let me pause there for a moment. They aren't in the driver's seat. They are at the uh, mercy the beck and call, the whatever adjective you want to use of whatever media rights partner that might be interested in them, reportedly ESPN, Apple, uh, Amazon. Those are the three we've heard about. We've pretty much heard everybody else and their dog out there has seemingly backed away from these media rights negotiations. And they are at the uh, whim uh, or the mercy of those individual rights holders. Now it says added. That being said, we have confidence in our commissioners and our presidents and chancellors are going to get a, to a place where media rights still and a grant of rights is done. It may not be the projections originally contemplated, reportedly 40 plus million dollars, according to reports, but it will be a solid enough financial situation to keep this conference together. And then we will work really hard to move forward positively. Well, uh, so he is conceding finally for the first time. It feels like to me, a member of the PAC 12's brain trust. I know the ADs aren't the ultimate decision makers. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, uh, the ADs are not the ones who ultimately ratify a new media right still. It's the university presidents and chancellors. So the 10 that are going to remain in the PAC 12 as currently constituted, they will ultimately either say yay or nay on whatever proposals George Klyovkov and the Pac-12 bring to them. ADs have their say. They can weigh in on stuff, but they do not have the final say on that. But I, I'm glad to hear that Ray Anderson has finally conceded that the Pac-12 cannot hold out for the money they thought they were going to get. I don't think anybody out there, yours truly included, thought that the Pac-12 was going to get the 40 plus million dollars George Klyovkov reportedly was promising people when they started looking into this. And in some ways, it feels like, once again, 
that the Big 12 kind of just swooped in and stole uh, the spot that the Pac-12 had kind of set for themselves in these media rights negotiations. The funny thing about this, I was actually listening to Andy Staples' podcast, part of The Athletic. Uh, does a really good job, The Andy Staples Show. And he essentially uh, made it out to be, this is a situation like as in, in recruiting. So say you're recruiting two great uh, quarterbacks, for example. You've got, uh, say, they're two three or four star prospect, whatever you want to call them. They're two quarterbacks. You like both of them, but you tell them essentially we've got one scholarship and the one swoops in and says, I'll take that scholarship. I'm committing to you right now. I'm locked in. And then when the other one immediately is like, Hey, actually, uh, I, I want to be, I want to take that scholarship. And they're like, well, we already had somebody take that scholarship. It's out of the question that that's kind of what's happened here with the big 12. And you've, as a BYU, you fan should be feeling very, very happy that Brett Yormark did what he did, kind of swooping in, scooping up what he could get for the Big 12. Is it the ideal amount of money compared to what the SEC and the Big 10 are going to get? No, but it is a short enough grant of rights. It's about six years from 2025 to 2031 that you will actually be able to get back to market a second time before a comparable conference, say the ACC, for example, will be able to get back to market themselves. I would assume that the Pac-12, if and when they get this deal done, I think it's more of a matter of when they'll probably have a similar amount of grant of rights, probably a six year uh, situation where they'll be able to hit the market once again. Now, if you can prove yourself, speaking of the big 12 BYU included during those six years, Ideally, you go back to market in the early 2030s and you see an, a market increase from your media rights holders. The nice part is for a, a program like BYU and the Big 12, they are on linear TV with networks who've already dipped their toe into streaming. Speaking of ESPN, ESPN Plus is going to be part of the deal for BYU and their sports across the Big 12 uh, going forward. If the ultimate shift to streaming does take place at the back end of this decade, like some are prognosticating it might, and the Pac-12 apparently maybe be uh, setting kind of the bar and getting into it early on, well, maybe they will ultimately prove that they were ahead of the curve. But in the short run, they're going to take less money to do that is what it appears. But it was very interesting to hear this. So you hear Ray Anderson say that it'll be a solid enough financial situation to keep this conference together should, uh, if you're sitting there, raid the Pac-12, Brett Yormark. Well, it appears that I, the Pac-12 is going to stick together. And I got to be honest, I never thought the Pac-12 was necessarily going to dissolve itself. I was of the opinion that as this continued to drag on, if it continued to be just the num numbers did not come back to be what anybody in the Pac-12 thought they were or that they were untenable, speaking of the numbers money-wise, they might uh, have some eyes cast elsewhere. And that's not to say that they can't fall apart here still. It's not done until it's done. That's the thing about this. You you, you got to get pen to paper or as the docu sign what they use now. I don't know how the e signatures, whatever they're going to use to do it until it's done. The threat is out there, but it looks like for now, it appears that the Pac 12 and Big 12, their little rivalry that's kind of developed, will continue on in the, into the foreseeable future. And we'll see where it ultimately pans out. But uh, we'll see. I, I'm interested to see what the final number is for the Pac 12. And if that number is significantly lower, if you're Brett Yormark, you can continue to make overtures uh, to some of these schools. If I'm Brett Yormark at this juncture, if the if you if you get the sense that the 10 schools in the Pac-12 are not interested, they're not interested in jumping, well, in that case, then I start looking at San Diego State and trying to scoop them up and take that San Diego market away from the Pac-12. It's all about getting yourself into as many homes as possible. And what San Diego brings is Southern California and over a million TV sets. And I know that streaming numbers versus market size are two different topics in all of this. But that's how things are going to play out. If I'm Brett Yormark, I'm talking to San Diego State, and if you have to, I, and I actually I'd advocate for this, bring Gonzaga in as a, as a basketball only member. They'll have to take a, a lesser revenue share, obviously. And there's a pro rata clause, all that type of stuff that's out there. Uh, but uh, the interesting part about this would be to if if you think that the writing on, is on the wall that the ten schools in the Pac-12 are content to stick together. Well, you know what? Go snipe and grab uh, San Diego State instead. Get them into the conference and make them your West Coast anchor. I, I think it'd be a fantastic idea. That's just my personal opinion on the matter. All right, coming up next, we're getting to your guys' questions. Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy week here on the podcast. Apologies for the kind of hectic nature of getting these podcasts out to you guys. But we'll get to your guys' questions next. We'll wrap up today's show with a look at Senior Day for BYU football. As, uh, not BYU football, BYU basketball, as they will honor two members of their program playing in their final home games as Cougars tomorrow night. We'll get to all of that as today's show progresses. First, a word on our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel has been with us for months now. They're a fantastic new partner of ours. The midway point of the NBA season is just past us. We are now on the back half of the NBA season. I know it's well past the half point of the regular season, but if you include the playoffs, we're about 
not halfway there. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and get started with them today. The best part is but new customers will get no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in free bets. It's a bonus bet if back if your first bet doesn't win. Think about that. You have to $1,000 back, my friends, if your first bet doesn't hit. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And the best part is you can bet on everything from the money line to spreads, point scores, threes drained, and a myriad of other topics. And the best part is FanDuel even, even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay if you are so interested in that. Get more money from you uh, betting your hard-earned money. So don't miss out on the chance to get your no-sweat first best right now up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official, excuse me, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you once again for joining us right here on Locked On Cougars and making us your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast. It's Locked On College Basketball right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Everything you know about college hoops in one place. Get yourself ready for March Madness. Check out Locked On College Basketball. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Now, a personal, personal note real quick as we continue on today's show. Some of you watching this on YouTube probably are noticing I'm wearing an RSL cap. I actually some really good news. I am going to be part of the broadcast team here locally uh, doing radio uh, pre-half and post-game shows for the KSL Sports Zone. It's the station I work for my day job. Uh, like I said, doing pre-half and post-game shows uh, ahead and after all RSL matches this season. Very excited to be part of it. And so I figured, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear my RSL cap today. I don't have many of them. Actually, I think this is the only one I own. Actually, I may own a second one. But regardless, it's a big opportunity, and I cannot wait to do that. First broadcast, by the way, tomorrow night, 7.30 pre-game, 8.30 first kick up in Vancouver for RSL. Yes, it is February. And yes, the MLS soccer season is starting. Major League Soccer soccer season? MLS season begins tomorrow night. So tune into that if you happen to live here locally and you have an interest. You can hear my uh, dulcet tones on the radio on 97.5 FM, the KSL Sports Zone. All right, uh, let's continue on and obviously get to your guys' questions on today's show. First one coming in is Blake Goodfellow. Uh, Blake Goodfellow, one on Twitter, says, who do you think will lead BYU in receiving yards next year? It's a great question, Blake. Uh, I would say it comes down to two guys in my mind that I think will be, uh, it's kind of 1A or 1B for me. If Cody Epps continues to build on what he showed this past year for BYU before injuring his shoulder against Liberty, I think he very easily is the favorite to pass uh, a guy to, to be the BYU's leading pass receiver in terms of overall yardage. Now, the other guy I think is a threat because he was the second leading receiver last year is Keanu Hill. Keanu Hill gets overlooked so much, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because he's just not necessarily your prototypical receiver, but he is just a guy who hauls in pass after pass. If there's going to be a guy that's going to pass Cody Epps, to me, it's probably going to be a guy like Keanu Hill. But I also cannot, I can't, cannot discount maybe BYU bringing in a stud receiver in the transfer portal if they find the right guy out there uh, this spring slash summer and that could also play a factor into it. But if you had asked me, I think it's uh, Cody Epps 1A, and then the dark horse in my mind is Keanu Hill. Next one, a uh, Royal Blue Seguero. Uh, Seguero? Saguaro. No, Saguaro. That's what it is. At the underscore Josh Glenn. It says, hey, Jake, the show is awesome. Great work putting it together and putting your passion into it. It makes long drives through the desert enjoyable. Where will BYU TV fit into the Big 12 network? With the Longhorn network being folded into the SEC network, does something similar happen? Now, the way I understand this, Josh, is that BYU TV is going to essentially go away in its current iteration. The Big 12 will mo move most of the tertiary uh, sports. We're speaking of women's basketball, softball, baseball, all that stuff. It's going to go to ESPN+. Plus. BYU TV will be still involved with that, though. They will probably produce those games, but they will not, as far as I'm aware, have broadcast rights to them. Those will go on the stream on ESPN+. Plus. If you have not subscribed to ESPN+, Plus, I would encourage you to get on it right now. It's going to be a huge part of BYU's uh, quote-unquote Olympic sports moving forward. So I would encourage you to get on that. And I, like I said, I don't think BYU TV necessarily will have a, like the current way they do things where they broadcast all these games. I don't see that happening. I don't see that the Big 12 is going to act we as to their request of that, they may get some rebroadcast rights, be able to put games on after they're finished, but they will produce games and get them on ESPN Plus is the way I understand it. Next one, DOB at D Drama on Twitter. What are the top travel destinations for next year's away games and why? Uh, I think there are three that come to mind for me. Number one, Arkansas. 
SEC country. Hog fans are absolutely nuts. Uh, like I said, it's the SEC. It's an opportunity to go down and see one of the big programs in the Southeastern Conference. I think that that one's, uh, you get some great barbecue down there in Arkansas as well. I think that's number one. Number two, I think it's the away game at TCU. National runner up this past year in the national championship. It's an old rival of BYU's from their Mountain West era. Uh, I think that would be a fun one to go to Fort Worth. You can get some good food there as well and enjoy that. And I think the third game for me, uh, this is, I'll give you three of them. Third one uh, is a very easy one, Texas. Final uh, game of Texas uh, for B- against BYU as members of the same conference, the first and only, I guess, of what I should say, uh, member uh, own matchup. And BYU going to DKR Memorials had some very memorable moments in that stadium. Most recently, obviously, the Taysom Hill uh, leap to glory, uh, absolutely just crushing Texas in the process in that game. Uh, that would be a fun one to go to if you could manage it. I think those are probably the three I would, in- I would encourage you to check out. Oklahoma State, who knows how they're going to look on Thanksgiving weekend and travel on Thanksgiving weekend. Weekend can be an absolute bugger. So I actually have that one knocked down my list a little bit. All right. Uh, next one coming in. Let's see here. I uh, Gary, excuse me. Oh, I got one more from actually uh, Josh Glenn. Apologies. Another question. What do you think the topic of the next major announcement from BYU athletics will be staff or facilities? I says, finally, uh, seeing big 12 Twitter join forces to dunk on Utah makes me laugh. Go Cougs. Much love from Arizona. Well, uh, first thing, the next major announcement from BYU athletics, Hmm. staff or facilities. I'm going to assume it's actually staff, and that may be a, a, maybe a build out of BYU strength and conditioning staff, maybe some new members hired there, sports science, recruiting department, or in a, be- a bevy of other sports. Uh, there's supposed to be an opportunity for a new assistant coach to be hired for basketball programs, both on the men's and women's side of things. It's a non recruiting um, co- position. So essentially, they're, a, they're an on court coach. That's their only job. They cannot go off, the, go off campus to recruit. I think that could be a very quick addition if Mark Pope has somebody in mind uh, coming up. So I think the next one will probably be staff uh, for you, Josh. All right, uh, we've got one on chicken we'll get to as we close out today's show. Other ones, though, real quick. Uh, Jason W. Kelly, what does BYU's roster look like talent-wise for next year? Says will we? And he's speaking of basketball. Will we finish better than third to last in the Big 12? You think they're going to finish third to last, jo- Jason? you got more faith than most of us out there. Uh I am actually going to do some more research on that. I know that they're going to honor Gideon George and uh, also, um, oh, who am I thinking of? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, transfer from, jeez, uh, brutal. Uh, Rudy Williams, that's who it is. Rudy Williams will also be honored on senior night tomorrow night. And you're going to also obviously have to replace those two. And also you have some other scholarship uh, type deals. And who knows what the transfer portal is going to look like. I'll do some more research on that, Jason, and get back with you. It's a Jason K. Redline on Twitter, by the way, if you want to follow him. All of you guys should follow one another on Twitter. You're all Cougar fans. I'll have to do some more research on that, but I'm going to look into this because I think that BYU, the young guys, Dallin Hall, Richie Saunders, Fuseni Traore, Atiki Ali Atiki, despite his lack of progress, it feels like in some areas, they're young guys who, if with another year of seasoning, off-season workouts, that type of stuff, should make leaps and bounds and should make uh, strides. But the problem is with the transfer portal, they can wake up tomorrow and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm leaving BYU. Deuces. That, that's the problem. You have to be you have to be careful of. Jackson Robinson also in that mix. I I, I don't think he's transferring, but with some pr- progression, you think he'd be a very very uh, good player. Uh, next one coming in. BYU gal Cougar underscore Badger says top five mascots in the Big Twelve, excluding uh, University of Texas and Oklahoma. Now that's a great question. I'm going to start off with the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. I, I think Cowboys is a classic. They have a great logo. Uh, if you've not seen Oklahoma State. States uh, swinging cowboy golf uh, uh, mascot. Uh, that is absolutely phenomenal. I think the Cowboys are on, on that list. Uh, number two, I, I think the UCF Knights have a good one. I think the Knights is, is kind of unique out there. Uh, they can be a little uh, pretentious, speaking of UCF as fans, but I think that their mascot is a pretty good one. Now, in terms of live mascots, it's hard to beat West Virginia in the Mountaineer. It looks like uh, Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, just the mountain man. He's actually, you have to grow the beard. Like you, you have to apply to be that guy. I actually, once upon a time, played basketball with a guy who had been the Mountaineer for West Virginia randomly. And he said, you got to grow the beard. You have to wear the buckskin. You have to you have to you have to be able to muzzle uh, jam a musket ball in there with black powder and shoot a muzzle load you got to be able to reload fire it again you have to be able to do all of that that's not easy to do and i think he uh, i think the mountaineer from west virginia is on that list 
Other ones in the mix. Uh, Manhattan, Kansas, and Kansas State. Eh, okay. Jayhawks from Kansas, not bad. Bearcats from Cincinnati, not bad. But I'm going to give a, a tip of the cap. Oh, actually, no. You know what? I like the Jayhawks. I like Kansas' uh, mascots. I'll give the Jayhawk uh, an opportunity to be on that list. And then the third one, I guess the fifth one, excuse me, the fifth one on the li- this list be going to be a homer, but it includes two. The Cougars, Houston and BYU. Cougars are a majestic animal, so why not have BYU and Houston, obviously both of them Cougars, on that list. Uh, Iowa State Cyclones, eh, whatever. You want to be, a, you want to be a, a tornado? Really? Is that what we're going for? But those are probably the five I would go with. All right, uh, Brandon Smith actually asked a question, a great one. I just mentioned Jackson Robinson. What's your take on Jackson Robinson? Is he staying or going after less than a stellar first season with BYU? And where do NBA hopefuls Rudy and Gideon play after this season? Now, Jackson Robinson has already transferred twice in his career, folks. He transferred once from Texas A&M to Arkansas, and then from Arkansas to BYU. As a new uh, rules are going into place for transfers, it's going to be very hard for him, I think, to leave BYU. If he wants to leave, he can still do it, but he would be subject to sitting out an entire year. And to transfer three times in three seasons, that's going to look really, really weird on your resume when it comes to your next program. Now, Jackson Robinson, I think, is a very talented athlete, and BYU would do well to hold on to him. You can never say never, but I think he is uh, felt at home at BYU, and I would put money that he sticks around at BYU. Now, with regards to NBA hopefuls, uh, Rudy Williams and Gideon George, I don't think either of them are playing in the NBA next year. Maybe the G League in the case of Gideon George because he has the kind of the height, speed, uh, shooting, defensive chops. Uh, potentially, you, you could say, okay, maybe we can develop that. But I think like Rudy Williams and Gideon, to that effect, could go over to Europe and make a very nice uh, living for themselves if that's what they intend on, on doing and playing hoops for the rest of their career. We'll find out what happens. Uh, next one, Nick Chadwick says, I always felt BYU, BYU football Lactic coach who would light a fire slash chew someone out slash rip a player, a new one, etc. Who do you think will bring that intensity to this staff? And when we stop hearing love and learn, you will not hear stop hearing love and learn. That is going to be a tenant. It's absolutely a tenant of BYU football, Nick. So that, that part's not going away. The coach or coaches, I think that'll be willing to rip guys a new one. It's Jay Hill. I don't know how much you guys know of Jay Hill. He comes off as this aw shucks guy, but when he gets on the field, he is as feisty and fiery a competitor as you will find. This is a guy who was a high-level player in his own right during his playing career and played with an edge. He coaches with that edge as well on the field. And I would imagine guys like Justin Enna, Kelly Pipinga, Sione Apua, all the guys on the defensive staff are not going to be afraid to let guys know exactly where they stand. The passive nature of BYU's previous defensive staff, that stuff's gone dead and gone. It's going away. But I think Jay Hill will absolutely be a guy who's not afraid to step in and light somebody's butt up if he absolutely has to. All right, uh, let's see. Last one coming in here. Uh, last couple actually coming in. Uh, Wild Turkey Fart Blunder Goodfin VWAG23. What's the update on Bentley Redden? Is he currently with the program or just done with football? I don't know on that one, Ryan. I, I don't know about Bentley Redden. I have to wait and see what the spring uh, roster ultimately holds uh, for him. Highly thought of tight end prospect. If you know more about it, Ryan, you, you got my DM. You can drop me a note and let me know what, what his status is. But I do not know on Bentley Redden. Now, the final question here uh, coming in is a great one. And we'll get to it as we close out today's show because it, it involves food. I love food. And we'll get to that. But uh, first need to talk, but uh, excuse me, uh, we will talk also about BYU basketball. We're going to uh, put a, a way over time on today's show. So we'll get back to the 155 games of BYU football independence on the Monday edition of the podcast. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But coming up next, we have to talk about senior day, BYU's final regular season game against USF, honoring Rudy Williams, Guinea, George. We'll get to all of that in mere moments. First, a word on our friends over at Be Wearables. And now, Be Wearables has been uh, with us for the past month or so, and they have a global fan base, speaking of BYU, and many of you live in different countries. BeWearables.co, which is Beware and Wearables mashed together, has collected real signs from around the world that are just funny. Uh, I've seen me wear some of these shirts over the past couple of uh, shows we've done them. The best part is they turn them into shirts. They also can do them on hoodies, phone cases, tote bags, and more. If you squint and tilt your head a little bit, you'll discover that life is really funny. And what these road signs are, they're collected from around the world, Southeast Asia, Iceland, Brazil, here at home in the United States, literally from around the world. And the best part is they're all funny from all over the world. And you can think of probably some of the signs you've seen in your travels over your lifetime. The best part about it is be wearables. They made them into t-shirts and they're high quality t-shirts, by the way. They're done through Amazon with fast free shipping. I've worn these t-shirts. I've got three of them myself. They're high quality material. Brad, who is the proprietor of bewearables.co does a great job with this. The best part is they also do custom designs if you're interested in that as well. So go to bewearables.co. That is beware, to browse through the collection of funny designs. Order them today. Enjoy them. They're meant to be funny and they have some great 
great designs out there. You will not believe some of the signs that Brad and his team have put together. Life is funny. Wear it. That's our friends over at BeWearables.co. Today's show is brought to you in part by our friends over at UCCU. UCCU, love where you bank is a promise, my friends. Made by a local not-for-profit financial institution that is dedicated to helping families improve their financial lives. The best part is UCC delivers on that promise. They pioneer new technologies to make banking safer, easier, and more convenient. They create new products and services that add real value to their members. And they provide easy access to real local human beings who always give personal help or assistance. I can attest to this. I've told you guys before. I'll tell you again. I have been a UCCU customer. They've been my primary financial institution my entire life. I love that company. They do it the right way. You don't take my word for it. You can listen to Floyd from Nephi. He adds this, UCCU is the best in what a banking institution should be about. They actually care about their members and go about, excuse me, go above and beyond to get you what you really need. They are the best. Amen to that, Floyd. Encourage you guys to check it out. That's Utah Community Credit Union. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. You guys make uh, this uh, show go. Uh, I cannot thank you guys enough for your support of the podcast. As always, you guys are great out there uh, when you guys weigh in with the show. All right, uh, so let's talk a little BYU basketball. They're going to be facing off against USF. A uh, big matchup, I think, for BYU to get some momentum, hopefully going into the West Coast Conference Tournament. They had a bye earlier this week. Uh, speaking, I'm actually recording this on Thursday uh, for senior night, so they should be rested up. They host USF, 8 o'clock Mountain Time on ESPNU, if you want to tune into that. The biggest thing, though, is to be able to honor guys like Rudy Williams, who arrived at BYU as a senior graduate transfer after three different schools he played for, and then also what Gideon George has done. He's put on those shoe drives for his native Africa out there and done great work with that. He'll continue to be, I think, a guy who's a philanthropist well into his professional career. He also got married while he was at BYU, had a hilarious line about uh, his wife uh, leaving him like uh, high and dry on Instagram after he DM'd her for like a year before they met. And he's also uh, talked about the fact that he's ha- had to kind of learn how to uh, – Woo the ladies, essentially, to marry his wife. He said, I wasn't very good at dating, honestly, but he's gotten married. These are two guys who leave a pretty rich legacy for BYU in their final game. They will obviously want to go out and celebrate that with a win. The biggest thing for BYU, as I mentioned, though, is they need to get some momentum going into the West Coast Conference Tournament. The only hope BYU has of the postseason right now, outside of what, like the CBI or CIT, which honestly, if BYU were rele- relegated to that, I would beg, plead, and just advocate the BYU turn it down and end their season. I just It's not worth it. You have to pay to play in those. It's just not worth uh, doing that. But if they can get themselves into the NIT or, heaven forbid, make a magical run uh, through the West Coast Conference Tournament and get to the big dance, Talk about a turnaround of the season of a turnaround of the century for this season for the Cougars. But what's the what, what's your belief that they can do that? They've gotten really close in some of these big games they have played recently, and uh, close, but no cigar is it, it's something to point to. It's just not good enough, and, and so that's the thing about this is hopefully they can just go out celebrate Senior Day the right way, get a W here, and no matter what happens in Las Vegas next week, actually it's the back half of next week and early on into the following week. We'll see what happens there. But the bigger thing for BYU is go celebrate these two guys and get the W on your home court. It may be the final win of your season. Who knows how things are going to play out in Las Vegas. So go celebrate the win. Once again, it's an 8 o'clock tip-off on ESPNU. Uh, I will not uh, be in attendance at that game. I hope to, but obviously when duty calls, I'll be doing, like I said, the RSL pre-half and post-game shows. I will be at our studios, uh, the KSL Sports Zone Studios up at KSL Broadcast House, uh, watching it on uh, probably my iPad or something like that, keeping uh, uh, prized of it. But we'll talk more about that game on Monday and exactly where BYU stands in the final West Coast Conference standings heading in to the West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. All right, as promised, final question on today's show. Uh, apologies if I, if I skipped over one of two of your questions, I apologize. Uh, it's nothing personal. Let me let me just be very clear about that. But this is a great question. I want to go out the door with Garrett at SF Garrett asks this: How would you rank these chicken places? Chick Fil A, Popeyes, Zaxby's, Raising Cane's, Slim Chickens, and then Tuckinator. Our good friend T Smith said I, he added in Houston hot chicken for the poll. We said one just opened in Lehigh. I've never had Houston hot chicken. I am intrigued to go try that one. Now I'm also going to include a, a place that I really enjoy, and that's um, uh, what's uh, Super Chicks. I, I think Super Chicks absolutely belongs on this list, Garrett. Now also with regards to this list. Uh, 
in terms of the overall rankings, we're talking about just the overall chicken, like what I like about their chicken, because there's different things about each one of these places I absolutely love. Chick-fil-A, the original chicken sandwich is like the goat of goats. And you can say that the KFC chicken sandwich is better, the Popeye's chicken sandwich is better. But if, if, if for nostalgia's sake, that Chick-fil-A sandwich is hard to beat. So uh, I'll just do this. Overall, if I if I had to eat their chicken, uh, is how I'm going to go about this, Garrett. So if, if I if I did this the wrong way, let me know and we can revisit it next week on the podcast. So number one in the rankings for chicken, number one, I'd put Popeyes. I, I really like Popeyes. Uh, I've always liked it. I just like the chicken. I just like the style it is. Number two, give me a uh, Chick Fil A. I, I think Chick Fil A does a really good thing. I don't know what they put in their batter that they put on their chicken, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Number two, uh, number three. Super Chicks. I think Super Chicks, it's in Lehigh. I think it's a couple other locations in Utah. It's a Texas chain. I really like their chicken tenders. They're really, really good. Very closely followed by Slim Chickens. Now, Slim Chickens, it, uh, some of you think it's absolutely incredible. Uh, I, I've, I've been up and down. I've had great experiences with Slim Chickens where I'm like, wow, this is the best chicken I've ever had. I've had some other experiences where it's been, eh, okay. Uh, next one. Uh, Zaxby's, uh, uh, Zaxby's is okay to me. Uh, honestly, folks, and you're going to probably, some of you are probably going to hate me for this. I was so not impressed with raising canes and I've had it three or four times now since, op since it opened its various locations in Utah. And I just come away every single time. like meh. Okay. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd never had it before it came to Utah. So maybe it's just me being in Utah, having it, it's just not been good enough, but Raising Cane's, bottom of my power pole in those chicken rankings. And if you want to include KFC in there, I'd actually put KFC behind uh, probably Slim Chickens ahead of Zaxby's and Cane's. That's just me. All right, so there you go. Uh, uh, flame away. Uh, if you want to uh, reach in, uh, reach out, excuse me, with your takes on how bad my chicken rankings are. Love to hear from you. Uh, send them to, let's say Deshaun Walker on Twitter. Uh, my good friend, Sean, love to have those or send them to Brian Brown, Brown bear SLC. Uh, don't send them to Jacob C hatch or locked on Cougars, but Hey, you might do that all the same. All right. That's going to do it. <laughs> Big thank you to all of you for your support of the podcast. As always, hope you guys have a phenomenal weekend. We'll see what we can do tomorrow night. Uh, maybe with the postcast, maybe later late, late uh, Saturday night, but regardless, we'll be back on Monday for certain, getting you up to speed on everything going on in BYU sports, BYU basketball. We're going to be a week away from BYU spring ball. We'll talk about the bigger storylines heading into spring ball for BYU. And also we will continue our look back at all 155 BYU games of their independent era. So until then, have a great weekend once again, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Go make your second listen. Our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast is a great way to get caught up on all the Big 12 news out there with Josh Neighbors. It's available for free on YouTube and also wherever you get your podcasts. Check that out. Once again, hope you all are doing great. Thank you for your support of the podcast as always. And until next time, this has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.